Throughout the 1970s and 80s, various types of martial arts films were a constant. While a number drifted off into the land of obscurity, others flourished and became highly successful. Within this ubiquitous martial arts film landscape, entered 1989's Best of the Best, a movie featuring many notable, high-profile actors at the time of its release, and while tropey and familiar in its narrative structure, it nonetheless effectively reflects a fighter mindset through its characters, not just in the fictional world it creates, but in the real one outside it as well. Hey everyone, this is Jan Man, and this is a look back at Best of the Best, directed by Robert Radler. Best of the Best is centered around a team of five American fighters, their coaches, and their collective burning, unadulterated desire to compete at an international, full-contact Taekwondo martial arts contest and defeat a fearful, dominant South Korean team. This team consists of Sonny Grasso, a cordial, everyday man, though is the least developed character of the team. Virgil Keller, a soft-spoken Buddhist who is far from the more commonly perceived fighter stereotype. Travis Bickle, a country cowboy with an ugly chip on his shoulder and isn't afraid to show it, down to a certain dislike or outright racism towards his Asian opponents or even his own teammates. Ah. Oh, so funny. Alexander Grady, who carries the painful emotional baggage of his wife's death after she gave birth to his son Walter, whom he takes care of alongside his mother, and Tommy Lee, who also carries painful psychological scars of his own brother being killed in a similar tournament by the same man whom he will now face, De Han. Their coaches are led by Frank Cuzo, a commanding, no-nonsense man who pushes the fighters to their physical and emotional breaking point, though like his fighters, carries his own painful experience and memory, which in his case was being the coach and witnessing the death of Tommy's unprepared brother. There's also the unlikely meek assistant, Don Peterson, who is always seen doing research or computer work, and Catherine Wade, who is the equivalent to both a sports psychologist and martial artist who can impressively break bricks as well or better as any man and can seemingly spout off motivational words without even needing a prompter. The Korean team, meanwhile, are built up to be fearless, tactically trained, and advanced boogeymen with years of accomplishments and successes, notably crippling people and doing so seemingly without emotion the most accomplished of which is Dae Han, who, as previously mentioned, killed Tommy's brother and seemingly did so without remorse or pity. And while the American team drills and trains hard, hours upon hours, these Korean fighters train in harsh elements and in assuredly more intense ways. The movie naturally leads to the final contest, yet takes a surprisingly emotional turn, one that seemingly and swiftly verges away from the one-track buildup and goal of winning and being the best of the best. These fighters, particularly Travis, Alex, Tommy, and Coach Kuzo, are driven not just by their desire to win or be the best, but also by the pain they carry on their backs. The fight, as is the case with many real fighters to this day, is cathartic for them. They throw themselves, their well-being, everything they have into it, and once it's over, that pain that drove them begins to release itself. That is why there is this complete emotional 180 degree turn once the fight is over. Dae Han, who in a reversal of fate, is spared his life by Tommy, even though Tommy could have done the same, since he was clearly winning and had dominant control of their contest. Knowing this, the bruised and beaten Dae Han, with tears in his eyes, walks over to Tommy and proceeds to confess and release his own torment, knowing he killed Tommy's beloved brother and thus offering himself as his brother. The same catharsis occurs for Alex after defeating his opponent, and it's why Alex is so emotional, not just at the end, but at various points of the movie, having lost his wife, his son getting hit by a car and going into a coma, and re-injuring his shoulder in the final moments of the fight, which had previously kept him out of competition. 
His hard-fought fight is an absolvement and expeller of the hardships that life had thrown at him. For Coach Cuzo, it's seeing a reversal of fate, knowing that his team this time is prepared to ease the guilt and pain he had, feeling a sense of responsibility in Tommy's brother's death. Even the off-color, politically incorrect, and racist ways of Travis are reversed and alleviated through the expenditure of pain that the fight provides. Best of the Best calls upon tropes and formulas of other well-known martial arts movies, such as the Rocky and Karate Kid-esque training montages, looming bad guys who end up not being so bad, the conflict with the head coach or trainer, and those melodramatic moments of the fighter getting that one last chance to fight and win when it seems as though he's out of the running. But despite those familiar grounds, the movie works on its own merits, with all-around good effective performances, a well-choreographed, staged, and photographed final fight tournament, and a true heart that beats within the mind, body, and soul of its fighters and many of those across the world.